quantum numbers are just a set of four numbers that represent where one electron is and also its spin. The first number, in this case the three here, represents the principal energy level. And of course, um, the N, or principal energy level, determines the energy, um, amount of energy. Higher N has higher energy, but also you could say it represents the size of the orbitals. Uh, in other words, an s orbital uh, from the first energy level is smaller than an s orbital from the second energy level. Okay, the second number in the series is for basically for the the orbital type. Um, so the angular momentum number, and it's kind of a either a cursive L or a script L like this, um, tells you the shape or type of orbitals, just like SPDF does. And you just need to know what um, number represents each of these. And just remember that we use zero to represent S. Actually, I think we have it here. Zero is for S, one is P, two, three, and so on. So for example, um, what are the first two quantum numbers for an electron in the 4p? Well, the 4 is just the principal energy level, and then for p, we use 1. So those are the first two quantum numbers for that electron in that sublevel. Okay, next we have the magnetic quantum number, and it tells the orbital's orientation in space, in other words, it says like which of the three p orbitals the electron is in. Um, and so there are different ways to remember what the possibilities are for these numbers. But the way that I use is I just imagine that if the middle one were zero, um, and then I go negative and positive, so this would be negative one and this would be plus one. So for this electron, I would say this is five and then for the fifth energy level, and then P is one, and then for the last number, I would say negative one. Okay, on, on uh, this one, it will range, so that's this one. On this one, the range of possibilities, I just look at, put zero in the middle, like that to get my range. And so on this one, um, the angular momentum number was two, because for D it's two, P it's, P it's one two is two. So it works out that um, the possibilities for the magnetic quantum number are going to be minus to plus that number. That's not how I usually remember it, but um, sometimes it's said this way. I usually just remember by like a drawing and I make the middle one zero, I go negative this way, positive that way, and that gives me the possibilities um, that if you have a D sublevel, what the possibilities for the third or magnetic quantum number are. So again, this um, value is telling you which, the magnetic quantum numbers, which of these particular orbitals that the electron is in. The magnetic quantum number tells you the orientation of space. So this is the third, the one we were just working on, the third um, number. And so um, for P, you know, there's three. And remember we said at the beginning they have their different have a different orientation in space, side to side, front to back, top to bottom, and so this magnetic quantum number can range from zero, minus one, plus one. Okay, the last quantum number is the spin quantum number, and this is like we did up and down for the arrows. Um, for this one, 
will restate Pauli exclusion principle. Um, no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. So that's another way to um, say the Pauli exclusion principle. Before, the way we said it was that um, two electrons max per orbital and they have to have opposite spins. So if two electrons are in the same orbital, their first three quantum numbers will be the same. And the only difference will be the last one. One will be positive and one will be negative. So in other words, let's look at this example. I have two electrons in the 2s. Let's do the um, quantum numbers for those. So second energy level, s, we use zero. And then for s, um, the magnetic quantum number can only be zero because the s orbital you know, when we number them, zero to minus and plus, um, S only has one, so that third number has to be zero. So they'll both have those numbers. And then for the last number, one will be plus one half and one will be minus one half. Okay, this is just a summary of the four numbers in order. the angular momentum number. The magnetic quantum number. And the spin Okay, on this one, um, look at each set and see if it is a possibility. And this is where you have to use your reasoning about what you know about electron uh, configurations and the structure. So what you do, and I'm just going to do the second one. What you do is you go through and you say, is that number possible? So um, going through this one, the first number is a one. Is that possible? Yes, um, there is a first energy level. The next number is a two. Two means d orbitals. Does the first energy level have d orbitals? No, it only has s. So um, if you have the first energy level, the next number has to be zero because it has to be s. So that one's not possible. So take a minute, um, pause me, and go through and figure out which of these sets is possible. Okay, let's look. Um, this top one, first number is zero. Do we have a zero energy level? No. So the first answer, so that's not possible. N can't be zero. There is no zeroth, zeroth energy level. Okay, next one, we'll look at this one. Third energy level, two, two is D. Does the third energy level have D orbitals? It does, it does, because uh, remember S, P, D, and so zero, one, two, it's D. So that's possible. Can we have negative one? Yes, because D had five and zero was in the one middle. So we had all the way from plus, I guess it's minus two to plus two. So that's possible as well. And this last number though, it's not. The last number has to be, um, can't be anything but 
plus one half or negative one half. Okay, let's look at the next one. Fourth energy level, does it have, this is S orbitals. That's good, but then this la next number is not possible because in an S orbital, there's only one. And so the only possibility is to have zero here when there's S, so. Okay, and then let's fill in what we said for n equals one. Um, okay. Well, that's it. Quantum numbers.